Hi everyone, and welcome to this demo. Today I have the pleasure to show you vSAN file services, which was introduced as part of vSAN 7.0. As you can see in my environment, we already have vSphere configured, and we also already have vSAN configured. So what we're going to do first is configure vSAN file services. It's only a few steps, so it should take a couple of minutes before we have it up and running. We are going to click enable, and now this wizard pops up that will allow us to configure vSAN file services. As you can see, what we will need to do next is we need to fill out this file services domain. Now this file service domain is a vSAN internal construct. It's basically a namespace. Uh, we need to fill out the DNS server, and of course, we need to specify the DNS uh, suffixes as well. In my particular case, that's going to be rainpool.com. After we fi fill that out, we need to fill out some of the networking details. And these are the networking details that will be used by the virtual machines or the virtual appliances that will be deployed for vSAN file services. We will also need to select a VM network that these virtual machines are going to be connected to. Of course, these VMs will also need to have an IP address, so we're going to be filling out the IP address. And if we have consecutive numbers, what you can actually do is click autofill and it will automatically fill out all of the details. Of course, you can also do a lookup DNS, so all of the DNS information is also automatically inserted into the uh, configuration wizard. When we click next, next, finish, we will see that a new uh, resource pool pops up that is called ESX Agents. And under ESX Agent, we now all of a sudden see a single virtual machine or a virtual appliance popping up. This is the vSAN file services node. So what is going to happen next? Multiple additional agents are going to be installed and configured. The configuration should finish within a couple of seconds. And when it finishes, all of the information that we provided in the configuration wizard will now show up in the uh, file services pane. So all of that information will be presented. We can review the information. And then of course, what we're going to do next is we'll be creating a file share. Now the file share, we need to create in a different section of the UI. At the bottom, it actually says file service shares. And that's where we can configure the, uh, the file share itself. So we're going to click file service shares. And then as you can see, it shows us which protocols we support today. We support NFS 3 and NFS 4.1. And we can create a file share by simply clicking add. We first will need to provide it a name. So we're going to uh, call this particular file share YB share. And then we can select a storage policy to associate with this file share. Uh, we're going to be using the default policy, but of course you could be using a different policy as well. So if you have a RAID 6 configuration, you could leverage that for this file share. We'll be setting a warning threshold and a hard quota for my file share. And then we're going to be clicking next. And we'll be opening up the file share access to all IP addresses on the network. We're going to click next and finish. And now the file share itself is going to be created. Within a few seconds, as you can see, the file share will pop up. And we have all of the information available in the interface to start using this file share. Now, that's not where it ends because, of course, there's some monitoring capabilities as well that were added to ensure that you can manage these file services capabilities correctly. First of all, from a capacity perspective, we actually show all of the information you need in the capacity overview. There's a user object section, and in the user object section, you can now see that we have file shares available. So it shows me the amount of capacity that is being consumed by the file shares. Besides the capacity overview, we also enhanced the Skyline Health section, where we introduced a couple of new health checks specific for vSAN file services. So we've just clicked Skyline Health, and then we're going to scroll down so you can see the three new capabilities that are part of these health checks. So on the file service, we now all of a sudden see these three new health checks. And with that, we reach the end of the demo. Hopefully it was useful and hopefully you'll be one of those customers that will be leveraging vSAN file services. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you next time.